Dr. Laura Daly. It's L-A-U-R-A-D-A-I-L-E-Y. Um, I live on the Chicago River, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Three Rivers, Rivers Estates Property Owners. And also was until we were able to get Sable Trail to change their mind. One of the owners of the piece of property that was proposed for a land transition under the Ishtuck River. And here we are, almost a year since our first meeting, with the first, almost two years since I've been working with other members of my community to see how we can resolve this. And it appears that even with tons, literally tons of facts and information, we still have not been able to really get your attention. What do we need to do to get you to see that your bosses, the FERC, have got to stop building more fossil fuel infrastructure and step back for a bit so you can take a wider view of the future, which clearly lies in renewable energy resources with a sustainable, inexpensive, and much less dangerous outcome. I admit we still need some fossil fuels while we make these transitions to a sustainable means because even if we start today, this transition will take decades. Maybe two if we're really good at it. We could get it done in 20 years, 40 years. But with lead times like that, we need to start now. And we need to rely on the FERC and you are our window to those people. Doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy. The FERC, not terribly recently, not too long ago, was found guilty in a federal court of violating the National Environmental Policy Act by number one, allowing segmentation of projects, much as the Sable Trail Pipeline has been segmented into three different, we're now calling it three different pipeline events, but it's one pipeline. That segmentation that the FERC themselves made happen was made to avoid the cumulative impacts in your EIS analysis. So that we can take one section of the pipeline and say, eh, minimal damage here. We can take another pipeline and say, no damage there. And another section say, minimal damage. Because if we put it all together, it won't pass muster. So I really want you to consider that. Three points, I'm gonna make them really quick. Number one, what, you're in, what the oil and gas industry already knows. Exxon CEO Rex Tillerson is the leading fracking revolution guy, just not in his backyard. Because recently, Mr. Nimby Tillerson, a vocal proponent of hydraulic fracturing for natural gas, filed a lawsuit to prevent the construction of a tower on his property his fancy horse ranch in Texas that will store water for fracking. Tillerson and his neighbors are concerned that the fracking tower will devalue their properties and adversely impact the rural lifestyle that they seek to enjoy where they live. His attorneys are claiming emotional harm, irreparable harm to property value, fear, apprehension, offense, loss of peace of mind, visual blight, and it goes on and we feel the same way. He is one of your industry leaders, one of the oil and gas industry leaders. Your EIS, and I'm gonna paraphrase here, says, based on Sable Trail's mitigation plans, there's minimal environmental risk when there's an accident if mitigation plans filed by Sable are followed. Sable Trail is the division of Spectra Energy. A bit about Spectra's track record, just quickly. Let's start with Steckman Ridge. Two years ago, residents living near that facility called 911 in response to firecracker-like noises and what appeared to be smoke coming from the company's compressor station. Fire trucks rolled to the scene. Spectra Energy's first response to residents from Marilee Hanley, its then director of stakeholder outreach was, nothing was released, there was no smoke, there was no incident. By the next day, Spectra admitted that there was a release of methane and other hydrocarbons, and they sent Andrea Grover, another director of stakeholder outreach, who is now a stable trail, to mitigate, to mitigate. She claimed only a small volume was released, and to this day the company refuses to say publicly how much was released. But through their own efforts, the property owners 
learned of spectral energy's uncontrolled release and the amount was, in fact, 431.5 thousand cubic feet of natural gas vented over a two-day period. Hardly a small volume. And now Sable Trail's Director of Stakeholder Outreach is Andrea Grover, who maintains that, that it was a small breach. According to FEMSA, the track record of spectral energy is not good. Over a seven-year period, 2006 to 2013, 21 accidents are listed by FEMSA for Spectra Energy's gas transmission pipelines. The estimated total property damage for those Spectra Energy incidents during just that seven-year period is $8.5 million. 13 of the 21 incident causes are attributed to internet, internal corrosion. That's 65%. That's unacceptable. 65% to internal corrosion. Five of the 21 incident causes are listed as material, weld, and or equipment failures. One thing when it comes to pipelines, track record, track record, track record. It's not good with these people. Finally, is it a wise investment? Fossil fuel divestment is gaining strength all over the world as smart investors pull their support and their funds to channel them into renewables because for the long term, that's where smart investors are putting their focus, and that's where companies with smart utilities are putting their energy. As of last month, total worldwide divestment pulled $2.6 trillion out of the fossil fuel industry. The Rockefeller Foundation, built on wealth accumulated from one of the largest oil companies in history, dished its fossil fuel assets last year. The divestment movement is on fire, and both Wall Street and fossil fuel lobbyists are feeling the heat. Almost done. Investors have been accustomed to a 400 to 1 return on the dollar for their investments in natural gas. They are currently getting about $4 return on the dollar. Those investors need to ship gas overseas to sell where they can get that kind of return because they simply will never see it again in this country. It will not happen. Meanwhile, we here take the risk and get no return, not gas, not jobs, nada, none, zero. Risk, that's all we get. FERC's own site, their own website lists in its top three priorities the integration of renewables. You all need to get busy and see that the FERC does its job and starts consciously working towards a sustainable energy future for us and for your children. That's your job, please, just do it. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Ms. Sue Karcher.